When the original State of Decay came out back in 2013, I was ecstatic. I didn't play a lot of games, so the opportunity to play this one for $30 on my Xbox 360 was an exciting proposition, and it's something that I really, really enjoyed, especially going through it with my brother. And so naturally, when I heard that they were making a sequel to this game, I got incredibly excited, and no doubt picked it up the day that it released. And to be honest, this new game does a lot that's different. So what I'm gonna do is to begin this video, we're gonna go through the first couple hours of gameplay for State of Decay 2 to compare it with the original and see how they handle things differently. I know this seems tedious, but trust me, it'll be worth it. So we open the game with one of two characters, and these characters can both be controlled by you, the player, because at its core, State of Decay is about a permadeath mechanic. If one character dies, they're dead forever. There is no rescuing them, there's no reloading to a previous save, that's it. This is a simple but very, very potent gameplay hook because it means that whenever you're exploring in the world with one of your favorite characters that you've spent hours developing, you will have sweat dripping down your forehead when you realize that your car is out of gas and you're running low on ammo because you know if this character gets caught in a hard spot, they're going to die and you're going to lose all of the time and effort that you've spent developing them. At its core, it's not a personal or emotional connection to these characters. They don't have investing dialogue or anything particularly interesting about them. It's more of the gameplay investment because you've put so much time and effort into boosting these characters' stats and you become very familiar with them. And this is something that State of Decay 2 does very, very well. It increases all of the stakes to their max potential and makes you stressed out in every little situation, exactly what you want from a zombie survival game. But the first few hours are fairly simple. You run around, you collect loot so that you can improve your outpost and make sure that you have enough food and gasoline for your survivors to, well, survive. You then all load up into a car and head to a nearby church where you can establish your very first outpost. Once you're in this outpost, the same gameplay loop continues as you go collect more loot so that you can expand your base so that you can support more survivors, at which point you will then be able to move to a new base so that you can collect more loot to get more survivors and then move to a new base and continue to repeat the process. It's simple, but it's fun, and that's what's really important. Now there's of course a few things that pop up immediately and that draw attention, and that's of course the graphics. They aren't amazing, but once again, we're looking at a $30 title here, or a free title if you get it using Game Pass, where you can even get a free trial for two weeks, in which case you can basically play this game for free. It doesn't necessarily excuse limited graphical capabilities, but it certainly does make it easier to swallow. There's also a number of glitches that you'll encounter in the opening hours of the game, but once again, we're looking at a cheaper game, so these types of shortcomings can be forgiven. The animations are simple and smooth, the weapon variety is once again fairly simple, but that means that you can get very familiar with certain weapon types so that you don't need to constantly be worrying about learning new styles. And I know what some people will say, that this gameplay loop in general sounds very, very limited. It sounds like it might get boring after a few hours, and surely in the new game they've had to tweak it somehow in order to make it more interesting. And to that, I would simply say, well, you're right. Okay, okay, this is this is the point when I end the charade. So for those of you who know what I'm doing here and have put up with my idiocracy i appreciate you for those of you who don't know what's going on right now everything you've seen so far is from the original game that released five years ago this is the new game do you see a big difference i don't i've put in about 15 hours into this new state of decay after having put in dozens upon dozens of hours into the original and to be honest i have a hard time differentiating the two now I know that probably seemed very tedious and stupid that I went through the original game to try to make it look like the sequel, but the point is, after seeing what the original game does, it's both a compliment to the original and a diss on the sequel, because guess what the opening of the sequel looks like? You start as one of two characters, the difference is this time you can choose a pair of characters, but once again, you're gonna start as one of them and immediately get into an encampment where you're gonna have other survivors, so the original characters you choose doesn't actually matter that much. Sure, they have an initial set of stats, but that really isn't gonna matter because the more that you play the game, the more those characters are gonna be tweaked to your specific playstyle. 
So in reality, all that this original choice means to the player is that you're gonna either get a pair of girls, a pair of guys, a mixture of the two. That's really all this means. You go through the opening sequence, learning the core gameplay mechanics, you loot some stuff, you go on, and then eventually you all hop in a car and you head to your first camp where you set up an outpost and then continue to collect loot so that you can gain more survivors, so that you can collect more loot, so that then you can go and move to a new outpost to collect more survivors. You see what I'm saying? This is the same exact game. I don't know what they've been doing for five years other than developing an incredibly buggy co-op system that frankly doesn't change anything about the gameplay. It just makes it more difficult to use. Bugs were abundant in the original game, but at least after a couple years they got polished out and you could pick this game up for $5 or for free depending on who you knew. If I hadn't played State of Decay 2 using Game Pass and so basically played it for free, I would still be pissed that I spent $30 for a game that is indistinguishable from its original 2013 inspiration. It's games like these that frustrate the hell out of me because I honestly cannot figure out what the hell they were thinking. They had the opportunity here to do something really, really interesting, to take the core gameplay mechanics of the original game and expand them into something truly unique and different. Now this is where my fandom of the original game is probably gonna come out in full force. I really did love the original game, so much so that now, as you can see on screen, I still play it, I still have the game. I really, really love it, but I wanted so much more from the sequel that I don't think it was ever even capable of delivering. So maybe I'm not the best person to criticize the sequel, but I think it's pretty clear and at least empirically evident that this game is a joke of a sequel. Even if you told me that this was a remaster of the original title so that you could play it on new consoles and PCs, I would still have a hard time believing you weren't fraudulently scamming Xbox executives out of millions of dollars. Now I know it just seems like I'm complaining and that I don't actually have any suggestions for how they could have improved it, but I, I honestly do. I think at the core you could have improved the graphic system, I think you could have improved the overall draw distance, you could have improved the animation system so it doesn't look super arcadey, you could have improved the way that the characters interact with each other, because at its core, when a character dies, you're not upset that you lost that character, that unique person in the world. You're upset that you lost their skills. You're upset that you lost their capabilities, which maybe is the goal to get you not just emotionally attached to the character, but rather attached to their abilities, their gameplay efficacy. And maybe that's more powerful, and maybe that's something they came across in their testing. But I think if you could add on top of that a personal connection so that you actually have an emotional connection to each and every character you interact with, I think that could make it much, much more potent. If they had spent some of the time and money they had to develop this game on maybe building up a settlement system so that you could craft your own settlement as opposed to just a basic stat alteration that it has now, something akin to Fallout 4's settlement kit, that could have been very, very interesting and I think could have expanded the game well beyond what it is now. They could have updated the animation system to add a faux parkour system so that you could even run up the sides of buildings or climb pipes at the very least so that you could get away from hordes of zombies at least for a little while. All of these things would have expanded the gameplay systems just a little but enough to change the way that you approach it. But here's the thing, at the end of the day, I know that I likely was not the target audience for State of Decay 2, which is very, very weird to me. I was a huge fan of the original, so you'd think that any group that they'd be targeting in the sequel would be the core fans from the original, but no, no. Instead, I think what they were doing was they were aiming for a whole new crowd, a crowd that didn't know what the previous game was capable of, and instead were drawn entirely, hook, line, and sinker, to the co-op. 
We've seen this from Microsoft several times with their so-called exclusives, games like Sea of Thieves and now State of Decay 2, where the single player is either non-existent or fundamentally uninteresting, but rather they focus on these cooperative gameplay experiences so that people get tied together and have a reason to play on their Xbox or on their PC. All of my suggestions for narrative improvements, for animation improvements, graphical improvements, they seem very obvious, but each and every single one of those would have required a fairly significant investment of time and tech and people and resources that these developers likely were not given by Microsoft. So it's easy to get upset at the guys from Undead Labs, but at their core, they're not the ones responsible for this. They were just doing the best with what they were given, and what they were given, evidently, was nowhere near what they needed. I know I'll sound like a Sony pony here, but I just want you to think, honestly and truly, would this game look and behave like this if it were a Sony property that they were investing time and money into? No. It, it simply wouldn't. Sony zombie post-apocalyptic games don't look anything like this, they don't play anything like this, and they're not designed to behave anything like this. Instead, they focus on the single-player campaigns and they polish the crap out of them, giving the development studios enough time and enough resources to do it right. I guarantee you if State of Decay were in the hands of a Sony or another development publisher that understood what it takes to create an engaging and meaningful single player experience, it would not have turned out this way. I know I probably just sound incredibly bitter, and to be honest, I kind of am. I was a huge fan of the original game, and it was something that I really enjoyed playing. It helped me bond with my brothers. It was something that we could all play together and have fun playing together. It was a formative title for me in my gaming journey, and the fact that the sequel is so lackluster, it is disappointing, and I am a little bitter about it. But that's all I have to say. Let me know what you thought of the game down in the comment section below. I'll read all of them, but thank you for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.